All right, let's talk about the face, lecture 2-3. Osteology, remember your osteology, review it if you don't. Uh, so we're going to need to understand all of the foramina of the face, the cranium, because that's important for these cranial nerves to understand those cranial nerves. So take a look at all of this information again. Uh, next, moving on, we see the muscles of facial expression. We need to be able to identify all of these muscles of facial expression. And so in this lecture, I've uh, highlighted all of them in specific colors to uh, help you, uh, you know, understand these as well as giving you an idea of the structures that they uh, innervate uh, or not innervate but move, contract. Um, uh, so uh, you can see all of these here coming up on the slide. Um, and then on the side, of course, we have muscles that move the ears. We're, we're not quadrupeds, we're not dogs or cats, we can't move our ears very much, but these muscles do. Uh, develop in humans, and some of us have better, uh, more fine control over these muscles than others of us. Uh, some people can wiggle their ears quite readily. So there's a number of different muscles here, uh, auricular muscles on every corner of the ear that allow us to do that. Something that's important about these muscles of facial expression that you shouldn't discount is that they create expressions, and expressions are going to be a critical way that your patients communicate with you by paying attention to their expressions. You can understand uh, the severity of their pain, their discomfort, the issues they're having, whether or not there's a psychological component or a psychiatric component to their issues that you need to pay attention to and work with in order to get them the best care and rehabilitation that they need. So all of these things are things that when you walk into the door to the exam room and you see your patient, you can instantly uh, understand what's going on with your patient through these subtle cues that they're telling you. So look for furrowed brows and wrinkled foreheads. Look for cringes on the corners of the mouth. Uh, you know, look for... Uh, squinted eyes and, and all of these things because they help you understand your patients and that's critical to you giving them the care they need. So next slide we're looking at uh, the motor and uh, sensory components of the face. We want to understand uh, how these components are controlled by the central nervous system. So we've already talked about facial nerve and trigeminal nerve, so this slide's just a quick review. <clears throat> so facial nerve exits at the stylomastoid foramen, just here inferior to the ear. We see that it comes out uh, and travels through the parotid gland, this big salivary gland on the side of your face. So this nerve begins branching within the parotid gland. Uh, it doesn't innervate the parotid gland. We know the otic ganglion does that by glossopharyngeal nerve. <clears throat> but these nerves travel through. And so in these slides, you can see how that uh, the facial nerve branches into the parotid plexus and ultimately branches across the entire face. A temporal branch, a zygomatic branch, a buccal, a marginomandibular, and a cervical branch. All innervating. Of course, we also, I forgot, the posterior auricular nerve traveling up and supplying the uh, posterior occipital uh, muscle belly, as well as the muscles of the ear. So um, we're going to see these nerves in dissection, and also these nerves uh, can be impinged, damaged, impaired at different locations, including the stylomastoid foramen, or by strokes embolisms um, or, uh, that affect uh, the muscles, the, uh, the facial nerve. <clears throat> so we'll get into that. A quick way to remember these structures is to take your opposite hand, hold it over your head, and uh, you know place it on your face, and you've got a temporal, a zygomatic, a, a buccal, marginal mandibular, and a cervical, and then your arm is the posterior auricular branch. So that's basically the branching pattern uh, that we see there. Now let's talk about dermatomes and the arborizations of the portions of trigeminal nerve in the face. So of course we have the ophthalmic 
uh, maxillary and mandibular divisions. First, looking at V1, of course, it branches a whole lot inside the orbit. The branches that extend out into the forehead uh, are uh, located here and onto the, the uh, reason, region of the uh, nasal prominence, the, the nose. We have supraorbital and supratrochlear that we've talked about, supratrochlear, supraorbital, and then the infratrochlear coming out across onto the nose. So those are supplying that dermatome. Of course, there are other nerves, the lacrimal nerve and the uh, nasal nerve that are branching, uh, nasociliary branches <coughs> that are supplying in the orbit, but we're just talking about the external dermatome right here. Next, going to V2, we have the infraorbital nerve coming out of the infraorbital frame, and we also have branches of zy uh, zygomatic nerve, the zygomaticofacial nerve and the zygomaticotemporal nerve uh, that supply, uh, you know, the face and the uh, region of the temple. So those will branch from the zygomatic nerve of V2. Um, uh, but, of course, there are additional branches that supply the teeth of the maxillary region. Uh, so at any rate, uh, you see those. Uh, moving on to V3. Of course, the uh, sensation of V3 comes from a mental nerve that travels out of the mental foramen on the mentum or the chin. That mentum is the terminal portion of the uh, inferior alveolar nerve that travels inside the mandible and supplies the teeth uh, of the mandible. We also have a buccal nerve that's supplying uh, the cheek region sensation, so that's buccal nerve of V3 and then the auriculotemporal nerve uh, supplying the uh, temporal region. Now the vascular supply of the face uh, can seem a little complicated because multiple arteries from the external carotid are contributing to it. So I've broken it down here. We see that the arteries that supply the face and the head and neck are the facial artery, the superficial temporal artery, so here's facial coming up to the anterior portions of the face, the superficial temporal artery, the side of the head, and then the maxillary artery uh, uh, supplying, uh, you know, the deeper portions of the infratemporal fossa. Then we also have portions of internal carotid artery that supply the orbit. Uh, so internal carotid artery heads into the cranium, gives off the ophthalmic artery that enters the orbit, and then that supplies supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries that supply the forehead. So kind of an interesting path those take to supply the forehead. Uh, so again, we're looking at this uh, mnemonic to memorize all the branches of the external carotid, and we're moving on from there. Some textbooks do a different organization. They organize it by anterior, medial, posterior, and terminal uh, branches. Um, so I don't like that uh, organization, so that's why I've kept it with the mnemonic. That's easy, simple. Uh, this is unnecessarily complicated. It's more to remember. So just in case you see a textbook that differentiates it in this way, you'll know why I don't like it. So let's take a look at the branches of facial artery. Again, facial artery comes up over the mandible, uh, toward the face, gives off initially a... Um, well, actually, before it even curves over the mandible, it gives off a submental branch heading here uh, below the chin. But on the face, it gives off an inferior labial artery, continues, gives off a superior labial artery. Uh, and then it goes up the sides of the nose as the angular artery. Uh, it often gives off an infraorbital artery or anastomosis that goes into the orbit in this way, um, sometimes anastomosing with the uh, inferior division of the ophthalmic artery, um, so uh, whatever, uh, but uh, angular artery heading up to supply the sides of the nose. So that is your uh, facial artery and its contributions. Then we have the superficial temporal artery. It gives off several named uh, branches, a parietal branch, a frontal branch, uh, orbital branches, uh, transverse facial uh, arteries heading out toward the uh, cheek. 
So this is supplying everything that the, the facial artery didn't supply. It's supplying all of this on the side. But we still have uh, the forehead and the deep portions of the face. The deep portions of the face supplied by maxillary artery heading deep below the jaw into the infratemporal fossa. And that'll give off uh, an infraorbital branch uh, that travels through the infraorbital artery as well and a mental branch from the inferior alveolar artery uh, traveling inside the jaw with the inferior alveolar nerve. Then, of course, already discussed the ophthalmic artery and its supratrochlear and supraorbital branches to supply the forehead. Also, it's important to understand the venous drainage because it doesn't strictly follow the uh, arterial supply, and there are a couple interesting points about it that are clinically relevant. So we see the supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries uh, drain into the ophthalmic veins, the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins in the orbit. And then those ophthalmic veins will drain into what's known as the cavernous sinus, which is an intracranial structure. Uh, so the uh, facial vein is pretty analogous with its angular vein and in inferior and superior labial arteries. Uh, so uh, that's all well and good. Maxillary vein is pretty similar, although it varies quite a bit. Uh, but because the supratrochlear and supraorbital veins drain into the orbit and ultimately intracranially, it creates uh, what we call a danger zone on the face. So if infections in the face, in this danger zone around the forehead or the nose, uh, end up traveling, getting into the venous drainage, they can easily travel into the orbit, into the cranium, and cause an intracranial infection. So if your mom ever told you not to pop pimples, then this is why she was right. So don't pop pimples on your forehead because they can enter the vasculature and cause an intracranial infection. I've never heard of a case where that's happened, but um, it's true, it's happened, uh, it, it's, it's something to watch out for. That's all I have for this lecture on the face. Thanks for listening.